So what we have here is a very filthy keyboard. And uh, I don't know what it looks like under all the grime, but you know, we'll find out. You know, this, this is one where I've got magic marker on the back of it. So I'll have to get that off too. So anyways, I'll take you along on a ride. Taking these apart is pretty straightforward. Flip it over on the back. There are three screws that need to come out. They're Phillips. They have this covered because somebody's name and phone number there. I don't know if that's still a good phone number, but I don't feel right leaving it exposed. So, got these three screws out of here. the screws I just use a box to put all the parts in now with that out of the way this back cover should come right off so throw that in the box so this side should lift out there it goes go down that way now with that we should be able to pull the whole thing out so there's the tray. There we go. So now it's a matter of removing keys. And I'll show you, there are some keys. You can see how dirty this is just looking in here. But there are some keys that have some metal clips on them. And those metal clips help those keys to move up and down in a parallel fashion. This key on the back has one. So you wanna get those out of there. I just pull them out. Once they're free, then it's a matter of lifting this evenly. You know, kinda of, kind of bring the key straight up and it comes off. There's a peg there that goes into this piece. So there you go. Now I have other keyboards. I know how they're laid out. If you don't have another keyboard to compare, Take a picture of this because putting it back together can be a little confusing. So now what I'm going to do is just go around and take, pull one key at a time off. Again, it's even pressure. I try to get on opposite corners when I'm pulling up. So and I just work my way around the keyboard, you know, taking them off. Trying not to break them off on the back. There is a tool you can, a special tool you can get for this. I just, to help me on the back side here, I use this little tool. This must have come when I bought some kit to replace a battery and an iPad or an iPhone or something. Okay, now I need the bigger keys. They're going to have one of those springs underneath them. So, you know, just, you know, realize that when this comes off, there's more underneath it. So... You know, once it comes up, you can see there's some additional pieces here. And this clip that's on here actually, you know, goes on there when you put it back together. So just, you know, if something come, too much comes apart, you know, you can clip it back in. But the thing you're trying to do is not break these things, right? Uh, so anyways, I've had them come out, you know, of the hole, but I've never broken one. So if they come out of the hole, you just put it back in. But, you know, so just know any of the bigger keys are going to have one of those underneath it. It might be a little easier to get at when I, once I get the other keys off around it. trick with this just try not to break off those pegs or lose a key all right now see if we get this shift key off here there we go 
This is some serious dirt and dust under here. That's okay. We can clean that. I have a feeling this keyboard is going to clean up pretty nice. Other than probably sitting in somebody's basement too long. I don't think it was, you know, I don't think it was mistreated or anything. Time to head for the sink. Got everything taken apart. So we'll take care of that first. All right, so for cleaning these keyboards, I just use a use a sink. I just use water, frankly. Also use a toothbrush. Just see how bad these are. I mean, maybe this will be a, you know, a candidate for retro bright. I don't know. Just take it one step at a time. Let's start by getting all the dirt off of it. I have noticed that there are certain keys that must be made out of different types of plastic, and they respond differently. Or discolor differently you know the space bar is clearly one of those items so as I get them clean just clean them off the best I can get the grime off throw them back in my bed now this key most of the keys are apparently a different type of plastic and you can see that key looks pretty good as is all you gotta do is give it a scrub and I find that for most of the keys that's what happens now this trim piece it's like the space bar you know these may be these few oddballs might be candidates to retro bright. Let's see. After we get everything done, we'll take a look at it. Pretty long competitive process. Okay, that takes care of the keys. Probably spent a half an hour going through that. I don't know. Let's get rid of this thing. This is pretty, pretty disgusting. Toothbrush probably isn't going to be the way to go here. This thing has some age name on the back, so I'm not going to roll it over. Expose that on the camera. I always try not to. I'm just trying to get the worst of this off here. I could tell you I'm probably going to throw this in the retro bright tank with a couple of other pieces. I have to start by scrubbing off the black magic marker on the back. That'll take a while. And we can stick it all in a retro bright tank. And next time I talk to you, I'll probably be cleaning up that circuit board. 
Okay, so I'm removing this magic marker. I got it to the point where you can't see a name and you can't make out a full phone number anymore. But here's what I'm doing, in case you didn't see this on my other video. I basically used some Barkeeper's Helper, the powder. I mean, this is probably like Comet. I've got a, uh, you know, one of these scrubbing pads. I forget what they're called. But, you know, it's abrasive. With just a little bit of water, not much. And you can see it kind of makes this almost like paste kind of slurry. And then it's a matter of just honestly rubbing like hell. And uh, another thing I've noticed is if you leave this pasty stuff kind of sit there on that surface, I think maybe there's bleach or something and maybe it starts to eat away at some of it over time and then you come back a little bit and it you know over time it gets it gets better right so it's just you know a lot of elbow grease but it does come off i mean there was a name up here i had a couple of very faint things i went back and you know, clean them off. But you know, you can you can get rid of this stuff. And I think it's worth doing. Because it just looks much more original. So I'll keep at it. Well there you go. Came out pretty good. Ready to go in the tank. Well, let's take the next step on this keyboard. I'm just going to use a vacuum cleaner with a brush, you know, sweep this up, get her cleaned up. Well, there are probably more delicate vacuum cleaners out there to do that, but I mean, that made a big difference just to start with. Now, the other thing I'll do, if I'm feeling uh, really detail-oriented, is I'll take a Q-tip and I'll just start going between, you know, these different key mechanisms and just, you know, brushing things away. This cleaned up pretty good just with a vacuum cleaner. But sometimes there's still some more stuff, unsightly stuff that I'd like to try and get out of there. You know, and it does, well, this one's clean. It's cleaned up pretty good with a vacuum cleaner. I'm not getting a lot off of this with the Q-tip. Sometimes the Q-tips turn brown. This one, not so much. So that's all good. I should point out that before I use that vacuum cleaner on it, I go around all these metal pieces and make sure that they're you know properly in there so that the vacuum cleaner isn't going to suck them out but you know you can just check them all they all they do is clip in i can just use this to push it in and make sure they're properly seated <clears throat> but this is pretty good i can live with that now i did give this a visual inspection on the back i have uh I did get one keyboard once where this circuit down on the bottom was pretty badly corroded and that meant many of several of my keys didn't work. I was able to fix it by putting some patch wires in, but uh, this one looks much better. And I'm pretty sure this keyboard, I, I'm pretty sure I tested it and all the keys work correctly. So I don't think there's any repair that needs to be done on this. Well, we just wait now until all the those other pieces are done retrobriting, and I'm happy with the, the color, and we'll go about reassembling. Well, keyboard's all cleaned up best I can get it. The keys look you know, pretty good, as we knew they would, just from doing my wash. I did what I could with this space bar, and uh, it's just a little crud on there. The back... I did end up throwing in the Retrobrite tank. Came out pretty good. Got a little yellow over here yet, but I'm happy with it. So when I go about putting this back together, I start with 
the large keys and the you know where I'm dealing with these metal things. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna start up here. This is a unique key. Is it? Here it is. All right, this one actually has holes in the side. So all you need to do is put those put this those holes that metal in there first with your glasses on. Like that. Do that first, then work it on a key cap. So, anyways, I'll give you a close up. The hardest one to get on is this this space bar. I'll give you a close up at doing that on another another keyboard. But I'm gonna work around, and do all these big keys first, then I'll just start and do the other keys. I'm gonna try to show you how I mount this wide space bar on a keyboard. You get the right one. I'm gonna put on here. This is it. So, first of all, see this metal. It's not really a spring, but you want to make sure that's properly mounted. It just snaps in place here and here. And, you know, I always put it up in this position. I've also removed the two keys above here so that I can actually see down in here when I'm working on this. If I'm putting a keyboard together, I start with this key as a starting point. But you'll notice there's a, a hole here where this slider goes in and then the clip where this goes on is over there so you know which way this goes correctly. So what I do is I start it, you know, this post going in here first, just kind of get it started, holds in position. Now move the keyboard, rotate the keyboard up to where you can see those those metal ends in here. Now I'm gonna bring this key out just a little bit like that to where that, that thing can ro rotate down. Now I don't know if I'm in the right spot there yet, but we're trying to get that down in that those two slots. Sometimes the way you can tell is put it down and then, you know, just kind of, oh, you can work it up and down. All of a sudden it starts to feel like it's moving correctly. It shouldn't go be able to go like that. If it's going like that, then you don't have it in right. So basically what you're trying to do is get that wire, those ends right in this little opening here. You can see where I'm pointing at. So it could be a little tricky. You just have to be patient and work at it. Well, clearly I missed that one. Try again. worry about this one yet okay we'll get that one later focus on using that round peg to do your lineup like I might be on yeah just see it if I push down one side the other side goes down that's how you know you're on correctly what that wire is doing is making sure that it moves down evenly across the entire width so once it's there now you can press down and get it in that you know basically you're making sure that you're properly seated in the key mechanism down below but that feels good so i think we're there okay i struggled mightily to get that space bar on there but it's finally on correctly i 
if it gets stuck or wants to stick in a down position, it's not right. So make sure you got all these big ones right before you move on. Because then at least you have a little access to what's going on underneath. So if you look close here, you can see how that that those wires get clipped in. They don't really clip, they just set in there. But they've got to be in the middle. You don't want them underneath. I should point out that I have another keyboard here I'm looking at as a reference. So if you didn't take a picture of how this keyboard is laid out, this might be a bit challenging. By the way, the L and the 7 look suspiciously the same. You see I had the L upside down over here, but you could tell it was wrong because it didn't have the right angle to it. Well, there you go. Now that it's done... When I compare it to the other keyboards, I'm going to say this is the best looking keyboard I have at this point. So, shouldn't be a shock. This is probably the one I'm going to keep for myself. Well, thanks for following along. If you like these videos, please subscribe or give us a like. All that stuff helps inspire us to keep doing this.